I was fine. I had a. I was gonna go with this place called El Jefe Tacos, but no that one sounds was down. Good. That sounds good. I would have been down <laughs> for some yeah. tacos. I think we would all. Bro, be they have the. They got Bidia there. Oh. They got buche. Nah, bro. They got Bidia though. Way better. I want buche. No, well, I didn't ask what you wanted. <laughs> Can I have buche? <laughs> All right, well, we getting this party started then, or what? Yes, we are. <laughs> what is going on? I already recorded, by the way. You know, we the first uh, 30 seconds of the podcast, we're talking tacos. <laughs> Round two. Round two. Here we go. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Shoot the Shit. Uh... I'm your host, Anthony. Oh, that's what we're doing today? I didn't even know this was good. I thought we were doing Main Street. That's why I said round two. No. We're doing, we're, doing, we're, doing, we're doing shoot the shit. We, we switched the days. We switched the days. We want, we, we're not going to get John's oh. treatment. I got Losh's treatment already. I don't know what it is yet. I have not looked at it. But uh, I got. we're getting John's on Monday. Uh, ran through some issues uh, with his personal life. So that's cool. Yeah. I don't care. That's, that's all good. Uh, oh, yeah, I care. I care, but it's like I don't. I don't care that we're not doing it this week. You know, I mean, I can wait. Uh-huh. So I just wasted my round two for nothing. No, I mean, it you sounded, can save it. It sounded funny. Yeah, it was cool. I, really I was like, all right, here. round three. <laughs> <laughs> we on that final round yet? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> was it? It's a UFC fight. You, ooh, I miss UFC. Um, no, it's still going. I know it is going. They haven't but stopped. It's not the same without an audience like wrestling. Yeah, it's the audience. Bro, that it's always good to watch people fight. Like regardless, what happened? It's my guilty pleasure. You, I love watching people fight. I know it's great. I love watching people beat the shit out of each other, especially if if Conor McGregor gets his ass beat. It's great. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Yes. It's okay. He didn't. He didn't lose last time. I know he didn't lose last time, and I wanted him to lose. I ordered that pay per view just for him to lose. I know you told me, hey, bro, I ordered the pay per view, and I was like, say less. I'll be there in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was at a coworker's baby's first birthday, and he was like, like, hey, I want to go. Baby. Peace. I was like, I was like, oh, you, something came up. I'm really sorry, guys. Bye. <laughs> that something was the Conor McGregor fight. <laughs> She's oh, probably yeah. gonna, this coworker's probably gonna watch that, and then like, oh, that's where you went, you fucker. <laughs> bro, I don't even work there no more. She ain't watching my stuff. I'm sure. <laughs> Um, I don't even care. With me as always <laughs> is Sammy, of course, my my good my good buddy Sammy. Oh, the captain. The captain, and then of course we have our uh, latest and newest member, of course, Rob's here. With his Hulk the best mask. and brightest, the best and brightest. Look, he's got the Hulk mask on. It's all good and good. Bro, Hulk smash or what? Hulk smash. Hulk, Hulk, Hulk smash. smash. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. Welcome back to shoot the shit. Uh. Don't know what we're gonna talk about. That's the best thing. Thanks, Jeff. Rock and roll. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll, my two, my, 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 my three favorite things. Just add some alcohol in there, and it might be four. Four. Um, speaking well, of... Um, by the time this comes out, you will be uh, 22 now, 22, huh? man. That's tomorrow as, yeah. of this, as of this recording, but uh, this, this came out uh, Friday, so uh, yeah. This time it yeah. will actually come out on Friday because, you know... I wouldn't have. Is that right? Hey, man, listen. My weeks just got extremely more busy, not only outside of Nights of Horror, but with Mad Slash era. Well, you know what? Whose fault is that? You know what? If I make it big on, on, I mean, you know, we're already coming up on this one, but if I make it big on Mad Slash era and you see me at an esports convention doing the podcast, you know, it'll pay off. <laughs> uh, we were talking about fights before you know we we did the intro and it reminded me that uh Mike Tyson's coming back in the ring, dude. Mike Tyson. Is. I, I'm Mike Tyson. Dude, Mike just got postponed though. It got it postponed again. In September. Or it got postponed. It in September. It was supposed to be in September where he was gonna fight. Uh, I forget who he's fighting. Was it Sugar Ray? It might be him. Sure, the uh, the singer. No, no, no. <laughs> that would be funny, though. <laughs> no, like, like Sugar Ray Leonard or something. Like I don't know who he's fighting. Right. I forget who he's fighting. Uh, but it's another, like, big time boxer from back in the day. Nice. Yeah, old, old big time boxer. So it's two yeah, uh, old. They should have had Holyfield round two. Uh, they should have had Holyfield round two. Loser loses the other here. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> um, 
And then I guess <laughs> I hope I hope Jake Paul gets his ass kicked because he's on that card too. Yeah, he's a. He's probably one of the undercards. I I don't know why they continue to fight. Is it publicity? Bro, or? but who Jake or both of them? Um, uh, Mike Tyson. Well, not Mike Tyson. No, Mike the... Tyson can still fight. I'll give it to him. He's a professional fighter. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't want well, to get hit by him. He's in the best shape he's ever. Yeah, he's, I mean, he said he's in the best shape he's been in a long time. Right. Um, and you know, he's not looking to get like knocked out. He just wants to to show people he's still in shape and he still, you know, could throw it. You know, throw his hands in the ring. Yeah, because uh, they're gonna they're gonna wear based upon what I saw was the agreement they're gonna wear uh, a heavier glove so it has more padding. Okay, and they're only gonna go like eight, six or eight rounds. What's the standard? Like twelve, uh, right? Uh, I don't I don't know what the standard weight is on there. No, the, t- the, the I'm talking about rounds twelve. Oh yeah, the standard's twelve. Interesting. Do you know Rob? With yeah. that, I mean, no, I don't no, know I, no, no, no. Like I, I know what it just. I think it depends. It's some. It's like ten. Some. It's twelve. And then I know what is it like six? Is it sixteen? I feel like it could be wrong. Ooh. Now get let's let's do this fight right here. Uh, Mike Tyson versus Floyd Mayweather. Oh, it's not even a fight, bro. Oh if yeah, Tyson like, hits. If Tyson hits Floyd, he's going to sleep. Yeah, it's true. Tyson's got a mean right hook. As we saw, bro, it's not even just that. <laughs> But he's got a big right hook, but he's also he's fast and he's a lot heavier than Floyd. Um, but Floyd, but Floyd's good though. I mean, oh, if Floyd he made his whole career running around day, the ring. He could shake and bake all day. He made a whole career just running around the ring. Come on. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, but he did knock out McGregor technically. Yeah, but then when it came down to him going into the UFC octagon, it's a whole different story. Oh well, yeah. I mean, oh yeah, he would get destroyed. <laughs> Bro, that's McGregor. That right- that's the only time you ever see me cheer for McGregor because well, I don't like either of them. So it's like <laughs> knock each other out at yeah. the same time. Yeah, if you get a double knock, <laughs> I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> but yeah. if I had to choose between the two, it'd be no way. If I had to choose between the two, it'd probably be McGregor because I mean Floyd just always annoyed me. Yeah, yeah, bro. He, McGregor will throw that flying knee, or if he throws that shoulders, he was throwing on Cowboy. Holy Ooh, boy. those shoulders are nasty. Yeah, gonna, I mean, I'll, hit, I'll hit him with the Judas effect. He was like, bah, bro. bah, bah, bro. We already know how, the only the, the, we already saw how CM Punk did over in that UFC ring. He didn't do good. He did better in his. I'll give it this. Okay, his first match was bad, but I think his second match he went a little bit longer and he did a little bit better. I think the fact of the matter is he lost his first two fights and after that just Dana didn't give him any more chances I feel like if he would have kept it going and, and kept training and, and keep you know kept it going I think he would have gotten better as time went on not saying he would still win but I think I think it'd be a cool minute since you know till he won but I think as if he kept if he would have kept going I think he would have gotten better uh, I mean I don't know I mean that's it's tough out there I mean I mean saying that CM Punk as a wrestler is a great wrestler he, he he's a good in-ring competitor uh as a UFC fighter, it was it threw me it was kind of a uh, it threw me a curveball when when he said he was joining the UFC because yeah. I was like how is this guy gonna handle UFC you know it's like it's it's really different but it, it, I don't know I mean I feel like if if they would have gave him more shots and he would have kept training and and kept going I think he would have gotten better as time went on. I don't know, I mean maybe hopefully. What about Jack Hager? I mean no dude? one's Brock bro. Jack Hager no was one's... a monster at a M- an MMA dude. Was he? I never seen his. I never seen his MMA. Work. I never seen any of his fights. I saw his debut fight because it was free, and he like knocked the guy out. I think within the first one, first or second round, it was really cool. Oh, did he? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I love like, Brock fights, bro. Brock was wild in the ring. Brock was wild. Um, <laughs> I'll give him that. Brock, uh, you know, as much as much hate as he gets, when it comes down to performing, like the guy actually can back up to what he, the shit he talks. So yeah, you know, but he's. I, I mean, he was a, a collegiate wrestler, and he right. actually. Yeah, he can go. And he can throw hands. Yeah. Go ahead, Rob. I feel like you keep getting cut off. Oh, no, no. I, was, I mean, I remember uh, when when I think it was Brock fought, uh, was it Shane Carwin? When he when he arm triangled him, I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I think that's why when they did the whole Cain Velasquez thing in WWE, like they made it look like Brock was like the more dominant one. 
and that he oh, had a, he left, oh yeah yeah he left his hand in it to him right like it, it's different you know with the UFC real life statistics we've seen Cain Velasquez can knock the fuck out of Brock Lesnar but right WWE of course yeah. is a scripted show so they they had to make Brock look like the dominant competitor at the time. You pay him so much damn money, he better look good. <laughs> I know you're paying him like what five hundred thousand. The last I checked, it might have went up since, but it was like five hundred thousand per uh, appearance, like at a Raw or SmackDown, and then uh, a million for a uh, pay per view. That's crazy. Like, uh, uh, yeah, Vince always had obviously has a hard on for him. So yeah, oh yeah, Vince loves him some Brock. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know who will take the put the one in twenty one. <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do a wild card. It's my idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, but I think like as far as that goes, it's like. The, did you ever see that that one WWE twenty four? I think it was after WrestleMania like thirty or thirty one or thirty two. I don't remember. But Brock was champion and he walks backstage and throws the fucking title of Vince and he goes, "Hey asshole!" <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was legit, like real. That wasn't like a scripted moment. Like they caught that on camera. I, I I don't remember what happened. I think either his. I, I think it was at the time where he was debating whether he was going to go back to UFC or not, and. um his contract was coming up, and he didn't. I think for like a while, people were shocked because he didn't resign with WWE, and he threw the title at Vince at WrestleMania, and he just looked at him and went, "Hey, asshole!" What what main what mania was that? What was the what was the main event? Oh, fuck, I don't. Remember. It, it was a Universal Title match, I believe, with Lesnar and maybe Reigns. I don't know. And did Seth Rollins come in or no? no that was, was Seth- you're thinking of WrestleMania 31. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because yeah. Reigns and Lesnar have. Main main evented WrestleMania a few times, so yeah. What number are they even on? I I don't even know the number anymore. They're gonna be on thirty six or seven. Oh man, thirty six, I believe. Yeah, because I remember thirty was or thirty five, thirty thirty five or thirty four. Um, I think it's thirty six. The thirty six, yeah. Yeah, they're supposed yeah. to be in Los remember... Angeles. Yeah, that's that. I'm never gonna get to go to WrestleMania ever. You are. I don't want to hear that. You are. It's I was gonna supposed happen. to go. Maybe not this year coming up here, but maybe next year it'll happen. I was supposed to go in San Francisco. So, that's why, I like, was legit, I was like, there when, when I found out WrestleMania was gonna happen in Los Angeles. Oh, you were there. Uh, the one in uh, San, San Francisco. Francisco. Yeah. 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 Legit. Oh, when I found out WrestleMania was gonna happen in Los Angeles, like in my head, I was like. And I spoke too soon because this pandemic fucked it all up. But <laughs> in my head, I, I I I even texted my mom. WrestleMania is coming to Los Angeles. There's nothing you can do to stop me now. I'm going. <laughs> and then the pandemic hits, and they're like, "Oh, well, we'll change that real quick." Yeah, I was like, "Thanks, um, Obama." Makes me. So I remember. Sad. I remember we were at California Adventure, and um, you were like, "Hey, I've heard rumors that it may be LA." I was like, "Oh man, it'd be sick if we get to go." Like yeah, bro, we're gonna get cheap tickets, bro. We're gonna go like all four nights. Oh yeah, dude. We're doing we're doing NXT, we're doing Raw, we're doing Raw, (laughs) SmackDown, WrestleMania, we're doing it all. (laughs) Bro, we're gonna go to the Hall of Fame, bro. We're gonna do it all, man. We're doing it all, dude. We're going to access. We're gonna we're gonna spend so much money. We're gonna be so broke when we go, but it's gonna be so worth it. Yeah. The good thing is though, like with the access ticket, though, I mean, we would have still had a good time because I think autograph sessions are free, so that's cool. Some yeah, of them are. Like, some of them are. I think for the lower superstars, they're free, but like the higher up superstars, like are they? Cost I had, money. Uh, I had to. Uh, I met CM Punk once, and that that cost. Uh, that was a good, good amount. You got an autograph though, right? I did get an autograph, and I got a picture with him, and I got to talk with him for about twenty to thirty seconds. It was worth it. It was. It was. I'd pay it again in a heartbeat. That's cool. I, but I, who did you want to be free? Um, I remember like the Bellas were free. Kane was free. Oh, I'd love uh, to be in a picture between them, man. That'd be a good picture. Dude, me and my cousin were in line to take a picture with the Bellas, and then maybe like 20 people before it was you us, it? Um, uh, Natalia and Alicia Fox came up, and we were just like, ah! Like, the whole crowd, just, like, everyone in line was just like, ah! Hey, we man, I, I'd still take the picture, though. Did you guys get the <laughs> oh, picture no, I with still, them? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We took a picture with them. She's retired now, I think, Alicia Fox. <laughs> Is she? Yeah, she's she's like done with in ring comp- uh, comp- competition. Dude, she oh, was awesome. she was uh like legit. I, I liked her as as a wrestler. I thought she was pretty. She was wild, but I thought she was good. I feel like they didn't write her right though, man. She had so many opportunities yeah. that they could have gave her, and they just towards the end they just didn't care. She was just that leftover like, oh, we need someone here. You go, come on in. Yeah. Do you think our truth would be free? Yes. So that's why I really want. And to I would yeah. definitely meet him, and I'd pin him for the twenty four seven championship. <laughs> I'll be like, what's up? What's up? What? 
You distract him and I'll get I'll pin him for the twenty four seven champion. That's the new try not to get Bro, scared. Bro, did I take my shirt off? It'll be the ref. <laughs> Takes the shirt off, has a ref shirt underneath. <laughs> <laughs> hit him with a low blow and then pin him. Low blow. I'm pretty sure they they like legit announce if he's gonna be there. Like, don't try to pin him. Don't. You'll get kicked out. <laughs> don't yeah. touch the wrestlers. Oh man, yeah. no. I, I but I remember going to SummerSlam Access back in like twenty. 13 or 20 yeah 2013 dude um, we probably ran into each other and didn't even know it because all the no, summer dude. times that you that you were talking about like i went to all of those yeah too. no it, it pissed me off dude because like the people i went with like we wanted to meet rob van dam that was our main focus and when we finally saw where he was we were gonna get in line but then they cut off the line so we never got to meet him ah. I, I feel like i wasted an opportunity though because like i i did i was too nervous to go meet anyone else so like, and Rob Van Dam was like the one I really wanted to meet. So it's like I never got to go meet anyone else, but I, I should have took that opportunity. But what was really cool was um, I think my mom and my my stepdad were holding a place in line for, uh, or my mom and my cousin were, or my mom and someone, my mom I think, she was holding a place for uh, when they were filming Total uh, Total Divas back in the day, and one of the okay. cameramen had to go use the restroom, and, and he you know he, he asked my mom if he can watch the stuff real quick. And so he, she did, and then when he came back, he goes, yeah, if you want to meet any of the divas, just let me know, and I can get I'm like, can we go back and find that guy right now? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we get exclusive yeah. one-on-ones with them? That'd be dope. It'd be content now. Content. <laughs> no, but at, yeah. I don't know, man. I've, I've had a lot of fun in the, in the past with yeah. uh, different wrestling events, and I've gone with so many people. Uh, Sammy yeah. being one of them, we went to a SmackDown, which was really fun. That was kind of like a late Christmas gift for both of us because i think i think by that point me and you were just so worn out with like content that we were doing over that like we enjoyed doing every minute of it but we were just we we were overworked and like we were like this is like seeing slayer and doing that was like a big like reward and vacation for us yeah but who is uh who is your dream wrestler that you'd want to meet mine uh i have i have a couple I'll, i'll name my top three though uh Number one being Stone Cold, I think. I would love to meet Stone Cold. I, I, <laughs> I would love to sit down with him and, and do a podcast just to talk about his life and stuff. That would be fun. That would probably be a long-ass podcast, but it would be so fucking amazing. Um, number two would probably be uh, – I'm really liking – I, I, I really like Chris Jericho. Um, outside of wrestling, I think with his band and, and the stuff he does is really cool. And another person I would love to sit and have a podcast with. And – He's no longer alive, uh, sadly. But if he was still alive, I'd love to talk to him about They Live, and that's Roddy Piper. And I know my dad was a huge Roddy Piper fan, so I mean, it'd be cool to, like for them to talk. I can I can already see my dad talking to him and shit. My friend, how you doing? <laughs> uh, what about you guys? Who who, who would be like the the top superstars you would like to meet? Oh, I, let me add a fourth one: uh, Undertaker, obviously. Bro, that's why I was like, you're. You cried when you lost. Why are you not saying this? Hey, man, that was emotional, man. You grow up watching that streak (laughs) leave. You go on, and it finally ends, and then he still comes back. You could have cried about it later, though, when everyone left your house. It was a live reaction. (laughs) It was honesty right there. You cried like your heart, bro. I don't know how it stayed on the hinges. It was a live reaction, dude. It was was a shock, okay? It was a big shock. You saw everyone in that audience do the same thing, and they were pissed after that match. You could not follow up that match after that, dude. Like, there was no following that up. Yeah, bro, because he was dying in the ring. No, he had a, he had a concussion. <laughs> he wasn't dying. Bro, he didn't know where he was, bro. Yeah, he had a concussion. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens died. when you get concussed. You could die. Uh, yeah, I watched, I watched the, the Undertaker documentary. It, they go into detail about that. Yeah, he was denied. and Vince actually left WrestleMania after that. Like, and WrestleMania was still going on. Like, Vince actually yeah. met Undertaker. That's how much Undertaker meant to Vince. We, I, I mean, we can talk about this another time. Because I can talk <laughs> about this for a long time about that entire match of like how they really fit. Why of anyone? I, you know what? I'm gonna make this bold statement. I would have rather watched the Undertaker lose to Roman Reigns. Like he does eventually, and it's a passing of the yard, right? Or him lose to the fiend, you know, losing to someone as dark as he is. But yeah, like Brock, I, yeah. Brock, like. But then again, like listen, like you said, he didn't have the he didn't really have the choice with Brock. It was like he got concussed mid match, and 
Well, no, it was decided before even he got concussed. Because right. if he got concussed, they could have still pulled an ending where Undertaker wins. It was, here's the decision today, and that's the final decision now. I don't know if that was... I think that he was... He said it. I don't know, though. Like, what, what makes me... What throws me off about... I mean, they could say all they want, but what throws me off with that decision is the fact of the matter is when Taker won... Or when Lesnar won that match, commentary went silent. The music didn't hit till a long time. And even Heyman looked shocked. Like, legit, like, shocked. I think, I he, I think he knew the end <laughs> result, but I think he was also, like... He was playing off the shock, but I think he was legit, like, shocked, too. No, I legitimately think the only three people that knew were Vince, Brock, Taker. Like, I think they literally sat down, them three only. Oh, I would say the ref. Said, I would say the ref had a saying in. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, the possibly, ref had a Possibly. I, I just, I don't know, though, dude. It's like. Because, like, if you, if, if the thing was, is we have to put Brock over and we have to make this reaction look. Genuine. Amazing. Yeah, because he is, you know, he's a. He's a dead man. Like, yeah. he doesn't lose at WrestleMania. So, yeah. if no one's in the know that he's losing, except for those four, Vince and the and the and the people in the ring, even if Paul Heyman doesn't know, because then you're gonna get an extreme Paul Heyman reaction at that point. Yeah, yeah. it, it just it shocks me because it. It, it it was very unexpected. Like, no one was expecting that at all. You yeah. clearly saw something was wrong towards the end of the match when he hit him with that last F five, and then. Like, yeah, I mean, he clearly hit his head. Commentary went silent for like a good five minutes, which I've never heard in the history of wrestling before. Even when Owen Hart died, like commentary went silent for like a, a cool minute and then they brought it back up. And it's like, and then it took him forever to get the graphic of the 21 and 1 up. And then it even took him a while to hit the music. So it was like, it's definitely, that's what kind of like hits me right there. It's like, okay. I would I would see up until the match only those four knew, but you should at least let the sound guy know or warn your commentators ahead of time. Like Vince could have got on the mic like towards the end of the match, like, hey, by the way, Lesnar's gonna win this match. Uh, but then you don't get the reaction that you want. I, I you don't know. Don't it just it felt it felt very like in the moment right there, where like everything yeah. was all real, you know. But who knows? I mean, well, that's, I think that's what they wanted you to feel is. If they if they can do that with entertainment, where literally everyone's jaws on the floor, then they did their job. Unfortunately, because that's what their their goal is. Their goal is no longer to to just be wrestlers. Their job is to be sports entertainers. Right, right. So, um, and they need to be telling the story and all these other great things that you know sets WWE apart for so long. And <clears throat> if that's the biggest shock of the night, which it was definitely. Like, definitely the biggest shock. And if you can get everyone selling that, and if you know, they're typically they're not going to sell as well as if I just literally pull the rug under their feet and see what happens. Right. Then let's do that tonight. It's, uh, it was definitely one of it those moments. It definitely made wrestling must watch TV again for a little while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was definitely one of those moments where you were just kind of like shocked at what happened. Yeah. And, but, uh, I mean, back to the question at hand here, uh, Robert, who's, uh, who's your list? Oh, wow. Um, so I fortunately have got to meet uh, two of the three on my list, which is I met Bret Hart a long time ago, uh, got him to sign uh, his book for me. And then I met CM Punk. Um, but the third I'd probably want to meet. Um, I don't, well, I can't meet and cause he's not here anymore. Um, but I really loved the macho man. Um, just, oh. um, yeah, just his whole, um, I mean, he, he was an in-ring performer, but then also, he was uh, a great, you know, he would cut these legendary promos. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Macho, Macho <Mike. laughs> I, I Yeah, those, those right there. And if I had to throw a fourth one in there, um, uh, maybe an Undertaker or uh, even like a, a Brock Lesnar. Good luck with Brock Lesnar, man. That guy never does anything. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't say hi to fans. Uh, maybe I would be that one fan that he would be like, "Hey, Robert, it's nice to meet you," and re extend his hand, and I would extend mine. And then he goes, "Psych!" And, yeah, and then he would pick me up and just wow. At five. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Sammy? The, okay with that. Put you in the Kimura after. Oh shit! <laughs> what about you, Sam? Your arm. Uh, definitely Taker. Um, 
wants another one that's a rest in peace. Eddie Gra Eddie Gra would have been sick. Ah, uh, yeah. Bro, he'd been sick. Um, Cheat Elias still. Bro, I loved Eddie Guerrero. I've been watching uh, a lot of you know what's funny is my coworker, sorry to cut you off, but my coworker at, at work, Carlos loves wrestling so every now and then on his facebook when he's like going through i'll hear wrestling things like today he was watching something with uh <laughs> with uh hulk hogan challenging the rock at no way out and i was like oh i recognize that voice or like the other day he was watching something with eddie guerrero and i was like fuck eddie man that guy was a legit in-ring performer right there well probably and then probably Dwayne, yeah Dwayne the rock Dwayne would be cool yeah bro i loved him bro when i was in kindergarten i was lit bro i had his backpack you like, were the popular kid huh? was- no one, no, I was <laughs> No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't popular. It's like, you're going too far. <laughs> yeah. That's pushing it just a little. Yeah. I was, little I, was a little, I was. I didn't know who I was yet. Right. I, was, I, didn't, I didn't grow into the persona that is today, just yet. Um, yeah, the stuff is. Uh, I loved, bro. I love the rock, bro. I was be trying to hit people's elbow on everybody. <laughs> That's great. Uh, anyway, that was our yeah, wrestling bro. fighting talk for the po- portion of the podcast. Uh, <laughs> Where we throw in every now and then. Uh, bro, it's anyway. like every time. It's it happens every time. What? Uh, yeah, pretty so much. <laughs> I got a I got a Nintendo Switch coming in. I'm excited nice. about that. Sucks, sucks. Uh, what do you want to talk about, Rob? I'm just <laughs> yeah, Rob. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> Man, so the other day, hey, have you ever had uh, like one of those massage guns? No, but I've tried it out. Like I I, I don't own one personally, but I've tried it out. A uh, teacher, they're beautiful. Beautiful. I don't. I imagine that would change my life forever. It would. It would. It would. Throw it on your back. <laughs> just, you just yeah. fall asleep. Like, <sighs> pretty much. Pretty much. The, the, only, the only problem that. is you gotta now you gotta now now you have one. You just gotta hire someone to do it on your back now. You get married. You right. get married. Hey, hey, come gun my back. You scratch my back. I scratch your back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, <laughs> but when it comes time to scratching her back, do you actually scratch her back? I do, I do. I'm, I'm in there. He's putting it work. Yeah. So the whole thing is, you do, you you do, you do her first. That way, you get her out of the way. And yeah. And when it comes down to you, it's like I can enjoy myself. That is true. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go try that right now. Hold on, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. You get the you get the love you you just, you expect yourself to deserve. And you get the love that you put out to others, right? So is, is that how it works? I'm gonna let me let me take notes on that, bro. I got notes, notes from the love life. <laughs> love line with Sam. That that speaking works. Of, that the new uh, new podcast right there. Speaking of love line, I actually have a date next week. What? what? Yeah. yeah. Someone's dumb enough. I mean, yeah, congrats, that's though. me. <laughs> <laughs> I should go. I should go drive all the way to Arizona just to slap you and then come back, bro. Catch me outside, bro. Catch me outside. How about that? How about that? <laughs> I feel like if we were to, and this is, I don't know, this is random. We'll get back to my dating life right now. But I feel like if we were to start a wrestling company, me and Sammy would make a great commentary team. Me, Sammy, and Rob. All right, here I, we go. I, I feel like you guys would make a great championship tag team. Bro, the fattest foods in the ring? I feel like hey, all three of us would make a good. We could be like the next Yeah, day. Yeah, I'm a... It's why, a new day. Yes, it is. Why do I see Rob like a rhino type character where he would just gore everyone? <laughs> I see myself as that kind of character too. Bro, you, too sweet. you better put it in. There we go. Too sweet. Yeah. Uh, I think Sammy would be like, uh, for some reason, I feel like he'd be like that t- cane type character. Not like that same character, but I think like because of how tall he is. And like I could see him using like a choke slam or something like yeah, that. Yeah, just choke slamming Bro. people. You but now that we take this back, I do need to mention my number four. It's and that's Rikishi, bro. Rikishi, Rikishi <laughs> all the way. Okay, I was gonna say like, was it Kane? Because we're talking about Kane. <laughs> no, bro, Rikishi, bro. I'd be like Rikishi in the ring, bro. Hit someone with the stink face. Ooh, Ooh someone's getting pink eye tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bro, I love Rikishi, bro. Too cool. Too cool, Was man. Scotty too hotty, bro? Yeah, I remember when they came back for like a Raw reunion when my mom and my my stepsister were into wrestling when we used to watch it every Monday. And they came out, and my mom's like, oh, I love Too Cool. They were great back in the day. I was like, <laughs> okay. Bro, I love them. Did you ever did you see a Royal Rumble match with like they, I think it was like 2000 or like 99. Um, not to go back to wrestling again, I'm sorry, but you know, <laughs> uh, I just get excited when I, when I get to talk about stupid things. I get to remember. 
They come into the ring, right? And they all dance together. <laughs> and Rikishi throws both of them out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's the Rumble match. There's no, there's no alliances. Or there is alliances, but it's every man for themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they knock out everyone else. Then they do the dance break. And then as soon as the dance break ended, they threw both of them over the top. Ooh, so daddy right there? Oh, he is their dad, huh? Yeah. Roman Reigns' yeah. uncle, I would assume. Dang. That whole family, man, they just, <laughs> when you think someone's not The Rock's cousin, you get surprised. They ask The Rock's cousin. <laughs> you got Rhea Nia Jax, The Rock's cousin. You got Roman Reigns, The Usos. It's like that family, that bloodline just keeps going down. These breed wrestlers. <laughs> yes. I wouldn't even, would um, even be surprised if, if Tamina Snuka, for some reason, was related to The Rock somehow. <laughs> it's like a distant cousin. Yep. Bro, we don't talk about Snuka, though, bro. He's, rest in peace, but. Superfly was legit. No, he's still alive, isn't he? Or did he die? No. Passed away? Did he die? Yeah. He... It sucks because yeah. uh, my uncle was like, yeah, he's, got a, he's got a rough pass. Uh, I'll just say that. Uh, my, uh, my uncle was a, is a huge fan of all the golden age of wrestling. That's when he used to watch it. And it's sad because yeah. like, every time a, a wrestler in that era dies, he goes, man, sadly, one by one, all my heroes are going down. Bro, oh, I'd be like Andre the Giant, bro. What's up? I'd be like Andre the Giant in the ring. Oh yeah, you're gonna wear the you're gonna wear the whole. Oh hell yeah! The, like the lead was that like a leotard? Yeah, or the, the big show word at one point. Yeah. yeah. It would was be. A, I'd be like a, a, a um, what was his name? A Luke Harper type character. Use that clothesline that he uses. I'd or, picture you more like a like a Vader. It's because I'm fat, huh? No, no, no. Because <laughs> you got po power moves. Power moves. Uh, power. Power. Yeah, power moves. No, yeah. my, uh, it's funny we talk about wrestling because I actually uh, know someone, a uh, character, Queen Mary, who's like a big wrestling fan. And they do like their own, him and his brother do like a backyard wrestling. They film it and stuff. And I told him, I was like, hey, man, you know, I'm very interested in coming on board to do commentary for you guys. I mean, if you're really serious about doing this, I know, I mean, I know times are tough right now and I know you want to get a whole thing going up. And he's like legit serious. Bro, he wants to hire a bunch of wrestlers and everything. Like, that'd be cool. Bro, with the the new board you got, bro, you can put some good audio on it. It could. We could do sound effects and everything. I could put a, a ring, uh, a bell ring sound effect in there. and Yeah. Bro, and then you can, because it has outputs, too. Yeah. And you can get some pretty cheap speakers. I mean, some high quality, but, like, low cost. Right. I'm down with it. But anyway, back to my dating life. <laughs> back Let's hear about it. Let's hear about it. Uh, yeah, so. I'm ready. I, I've known her since middle school. Ooh. Uh. Marriage. Do I, know this person? I already see it. Marriage. I don't think so. I mean, you might not. She oh. was kind of really under the radar in high school. Like, not saying she Bro, wasn't I, popular I'm or anything. Like, she, just, she was just that type of person. Like, didn't really like to go out there too much. And Bro, I'm in the radar, bro. I know everybody. I know <laughs> I'm put my yearbook out right now. Like, I'll find you. I'll find you. Uh, no, but <laughs> watch me. I know who you are. <laughs> uh, I, I just hit her up and asking her if she wanted to go out. Uh, she said, "Yeah." So we're he heading so to the beach. A, a next date weekend. or what? No, we're she going to the beach. Know. Let's go to the beach, beach. Let's go to the waves. They say Which what? Which I'm they very, I'm very scared to do because of COVID. So, yeah. So, um, my recommendations are, you know, you know, maybe get a haircut. Um, Fuck you. Maybe, uh, <laughs> uh, second recommendation is uh, stay six feet apart. Oh, I do. I've been begging Celine every day. Just go buzz I'm cut. I'm putting it out here. The, I'm putting it out in the in the world now. At this point, just get a buzz cut. <laughs> Bro, I want to, but I just don't. I I, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cut the back right by myself. It's gonna look like Walter That's White. I'm like to cut my hair. <laughs> look like Walter White. I'm not touching my hair ever. He likes bro, you wild and I can, bro. Like, I'll be at work sometimes right here in my, my room. Like, I'll just show the fans <laughs> here how bad it is. Look at that, bro. It's ridiculous. You look like Zack Ryder. Bro, it's dummy, dummy long, bro. Dummy long. Yeah, but uh, we're going to the uh, the beach next weekend. And then if all goes good that weekend after that, um, we're planning a drive-in one. And I was just talking to Rob. Uh, at the end of the month, I could probably take her to City Walk, and we can go do that. Be good to get some footage yeah, from there. Yeah, bro. If you need dating ideas, uh, ask Rob. Okay. Yeah, you can talk to me. <laughs> can talk to Rob. Rob's, Rob's, just, Rob's married. I mean, Rob's, Rob's a seasoned professional out there. You know, I mean, he he learned how to put a ring on it. So yeah, uh, I learned to lock he, him he down. Yeah, he knows what he knows how to lock him down. I know how to. Uh, so talk to Robin Logan then, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, 
if you need like honest advice, like you know, Will you can always meet up. Like, <laughs> I can, I call it, I call it like I see it. I call it down the middle. I know you do. We've had discussions about this in the past. <laughs> yes, uh, like today you sent me a video. I called it down the middle. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I sent him a video of Chris Jericho doing a cover of Aces High from Iron Maiden with a bunch of other people from other bands. Okay. Uh, they have like a little cover tribute band thing, and I thought it was good, but I think uh, Sammy didn't like the way Jericho was singing in there. Bro, his auto, I would have rather him not try to be like the, I don't know the singer of Iron Maiden. Bruce thing, Dickinson. Of my, yeah, Bruce. Uh, I thought it was Bruce, actually, so good job, Sam. Good job, Sam. I didn't want to be wrong. <laughs> good for you, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I thought his name was Bruce, but I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to say that, and then now I'm gonna look dumb. I got you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. That's oh, you for you, Sammy. You That's for you, Sammy. Thank you. You on the board right now, or what? I'm on the board right now, dude. That's why I'm using uh, a XLR mic now. We're, we're stepping up in the world. Dang, bro, I need to step my game up. Um, and by stepping my game up, now putting this out in the world too. Someone needs to ship me the snowball. I'm broke but, right now, okay. What did I tell you last time? <laughs> tell me how much it is, and I will send you the money. You it's would have to send to like eight dollars extra because I'm negative eight dollars in my account right now. Well, I can't fix that problem, my friend. Go get some cans. <laughs> I got cans. I, I just been too lazy to take them, but I should take them pretty soon. <laughs> Go get the cans, bro, because I know you got them. I got them, bro. I've been bargain. <laughs> You've been with me to, to, to recycle them at some points. I know I have. That was how we got around to our weekends at the swap meet or the weekends at Knott's, you know, take the cans. Yeah, it's a, I need to pitch my gas, too. Sam, you want to go me to get the cans? Hey, <laughs> I'd still come through on my <laughs> gas, though. Hey, that's, hey, I'm not making fun of you, bro. I'm just, I'm just stating the fact. That's what I may need to do for gas coming up, unless someone wants to give me a, a free tank of gas for my birthday. That, that's an update. Um, let me pull Mom, out my is that you got to go? <laughs> Rob, let me pull out my debit card. <laughs> Drives all You're the way nice to Norwalk person. just to give me a freaking free tank of gas and drives back. Nah, I wouldn't do that to Rob. I'd be like, come to the house. Let's chill for a bit. Let's have a beer. I don't I don't drink. He doesn't drink. I That's right. A, we talked about this. I'll have a, uh, I'll have a cup of water. I'll have a cup of water. <laughs> Wait, you don't solid... drink at all, Rob? Uh, I don't want to see it. like on a level like I would or you or like you would, you know yeah. what I mean? Like he'll, he'll take sips or something if he wants to try something, but. Yeah, but I don't like I'll ne I've never had like a full uh can of beer or anything like that. I I'll see if you're oh, like, really? Hey, this is good. Yeah, if you're like, Hey, this is good, just try some, I'll be like and then that's it. Oh. You wanna try a Michelada? I actually have tried one of those and I will say fantastic. You haven't tried mine yeah. though, so Okay, well I'll try one of yours. I mean you... it's like doo doo. Fuck oh, you, I learned from the best, and that and that's Senior Pell, so it doesn't taste Bro, like doo-doo. Senior Pell does everything good. I know. Senior Pony, uh, he's a work in progress. That's bullshit, because I made his exact recipe for chicken Alfredo, and I got a standing ovation from the whole house. Bro, they must have been starving. They must have not eaten in three days. No. It was a redemption. <laughs> the redemption, bro. Would, but what would Gordon Ramsay say? Terrific. It's good. It's flavorful. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Or he'd be like, Wait, so it's, it's very bland. What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> My dad's been on a Gordon Ramsay uh, rant lately. <laughs> so uh, which beach are you going to? That's that's the real question. Uh, right? I've been thinking about that. Which one is like the nicest one? Uh, Huntington, the nice pier. That's the one I go to. I'll, if I'm going to go to a beach, I go to Huntington. Huntington. But, uh, yeah, You're going to have to pay for parking. Yeah, I so know. Yeah, you, know you, do you have better to... get money well, in your See, but, but that's how you know it's well, a nice beach. If I'm lucky enough, parking. maybe maybe Nana will send me some money for for birthday tomorrow. So she did last year, so that's true. Um, I'll save so that money for that date. Yeah. I, I will starve um, at work. I will not eat lunch. Yeah, bro. You better learn how to eat some PB and J, my friend. I, I don't mind PB and J. We got some bread. We got some peanut butter and jelly here. I got <laughs> bro, some I don't save, that, save some money, bro. I'm good. The only thing I'll probably bro. throw twenty dollars in is some gas and that's it. Bro, I take the cans. Well, I mean, I'll get even more money, dude. We'll be set for this first date. I was gonna be saying a really bad thing. I was gonna <laughs> say cash yeah, grass or oh fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. No, I have honestly though, like in all real though, I have a really good feeling about this one. Oh, but bro, you're putting it out there in the universe, so good luck. Well, I am. Well, I said, I said, uh, I said marriage right off the bat. So, uh, Rob, you've bigger hopes than me. I say uh, three weeks. <laughs> Yeah, I shoot. 
No, I do. I, I really want to. I, 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 I want to do this right this time. I feel like in the past I have not done it right, and I really want to do this one right. See, so, all this, all this sounds like like this is gonna be a long, long kind of thing, and then. So how? So what does doing it right look in the book of Tony? Uh, let's, I don't know. Uh, Just be better than the last one. Uh, I so it, I think it starts with communication. It does. If you can't talk to one another. Then you're not gonna be able to address your issues with one another. Right. Hey Bab, I love you. <laughs> communication. Communication. Yeah. Let yeah, it come an example vulnerability. Right here. Vulnerability. <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable when you do this. Or <laughs> you know, I've been really struggling with this. Rob, any examples? Honestly. Um I all I can say all the times I get yelled at for stuff like pick up your sock, pick up your socks, uh, clean the mirror. So as long as you do, as long as you clean the mirror and pick up your socks, you should be okay. Yeah, honesty. You gotta be honest with one another. Yeah, these are my intentions. I yeah. think I just found the name for this podcast. It's relationship advice with fucking Sam. Bro, bro, <laughs> it started as uh, I was gonna say let's name this thing Friday Night Fights, but now it's becoming very sentimental. So. No, that's a gay turn. Laugh track. Oh, thank you. Laugh track. Aha, uh-huh. jokes. All right, let's see what else. So, like, honesty, vulnerability. Um, yeah, let me, I think let, let, me, let me give you the best advice. And I say this to my wife all the time. I say, babe, it is better. Let me look at the camera. Huh? It is better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Goals. Forgiveness than for permission. Oh wow. Yes, it's especially when you're married. I just murdered someone. Can I get some forgiveness? <laughs> I didn't get your permission, but can I get your forgiveness? <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know what? I, it also takes the willingness to do things wrong, and to come back together and try it again. Yeah, like I'm. I'm always doing everything wrong, and she does everything right. So it's everything's perfect. Yeah, yeah. and if she's right. <laughs> happy wife equals happy life so uh, you guys sound like i'm right getting there. married dude i'm not getting married right there, right there. Well, no 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 right there uh, those other things are that's those are keys to relationships regardless of them looking to be like marriage or it's like friendship it's all about honesty Wait, so true so, vulnerability so why don't you have a girlfriend yet who me because nobody likes this face apparently <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, if you if you are looking, hit me up my DMs. Hit them in the DMs, <laughs> bro. You can hit me up at uh, Nights you, of Horror, you uh, Nights him. of Horror on Instagram. You can hit, catch him on the uh, Horror, the OnlyFans Nights of Horror account. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll do no. some. Uh, yeah, good, so. good advice. Good advice. Wise well, I, words I, spoken. I, I, I I am a man of good advice. Um, also, listening. Listening is very key. I forgot to say that. Um, <laughs> Not just hearing someone, but listening to them. It it goes a it goes a long way. I give very mediocre advice, so you could go up or you could go down from where I'm at. Well, that's why yeah, I'm sure. Hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but um, like, yeah. If anyone uh, also, if you need any dating advice, life advice, and my DMs too, I'll get you down. Get your stories. We'll... There's gonna be that one comment like you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> you're right, I don't. These you know guys what? are crazy. Crazy. God. No one does it better. I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> I know where it's. <laughs> I just it better if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want me to, I will. I, I started doing the face, and then like I like I admitted the like, I was going to say something. I was like, mm, better not. Yeah. yeah. Sammy can, because Sammy's got a better political stance than I do, but... Uh, yeah, Robert, so I don't know where you are right. in the world of politics. We won't get into that right now, though. But, you know, in the words of Frank Sinatra, that's life. Yeah. You were about to sing it, weren't you? No, I was trying to think of another Sinatra song. What about the one? I was thinking- okay, I got – here's a good way to end it, and I don't know. I could probably answer this one for Sammy already. It's going to be no. But, Rob, have you watched season yes. two of Umbrella Academy yet? Halfway through it. Halfway through it. Okay, Sammy, you gotta you gotta watch it, man. 
Yeah, so uh, The Black Parade by Gerard Way was a great album um, with My Chemical Romance. Um, um, he also, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge was a great album. Uh, their fourth album wasn't so great. Uh, album one, you know, really is a deep what track. What the hell there. are you talking about? <laughs> Gerard Way was is the guy who created Umbrella Academy. I know it was, but I didn't know he did music too. Bro, you don't know who My Chemical Romance is? Wait, is he the lead singer of that lead- band? He's the lead singer of My Chemical Romance. That motherfucker created the- Umbrella Academy. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. You learn wow. something new every day. The more you know. Yes. The same guy who wrote that fucking song, Teenagers? Yeah, bro. <laughs> no wonder why that fucking... I, from things? what I've heard, I've not read the book, but I've, I've, I love the show. But from what I've heard, the book is fucking weird, so that explains a lot. Yeah, he's a, he's a very interesting guy. But I will say, like, from track one to track fourteen of the Black Parade, it is a very good story. Like you, if even if you don't like the music, there's a very interesting story told there about death and how it impacts people. He must be making so, a bank right now. Then he don't even need to go on another tour. They didn't even need to come back. Like he's got all oh, this no, money from Umbrella. Did, they definitely did not need to come back. But like, like myself, I'm a really big Michael Gorman fan. I would probably listen to some of my top five bands of all time, just because it had such an impact on my life. So um, here's another question. Do you think he was actually on set when they were when they were filming on this? The Gerald Way? You think he came down I'm and visited sure. a couple times? I'm pretty sure. I mean, you want to see your your work come to life, right? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure he's one of the writers on the show. Yeah, no, I, I don't know if he's a writer, but he might be, he might have a lot of creative input in it. You know what I mean? Since yeah. it is his book, you know, he might he might be in the room when they're writing. Like, no, I want to do this instead of. Th-. I mean, dude. Season one was great. Season two was fan fucking tastic, and I cannot wait for season three. Uh, you need to watch it ASAP. Good to know, Sammy. Like, good I think you would know. really enjoy it. Like, if you like the whole, the darker world of superheroes and and time travel and all that, like, it's a really good show. This is what I heard. This is a, a theory that I've read: is that if you like My Chemical Romance, you will like The Umbrella Academy. If you do not like My Chemical Romance, you're probably not going to like The Umbrella Academy. That is not entirely true because I'm not a big My yeah. Chemical Romance fan, and I love The Umbrella Academy. No, no, but you didn't listen to my statement. I said, if you like My Chemical Romance, you will probably like Umbrella Academy. Yeah, but... I didn't say that if you like Umbrella Academy, you'll like My Chemical Romance. I only like, like, one song, so it's, like... It's different from when liking one song to liking an entire band. That's you true. Know? Yeah, no, I didn't say that, though. That wasn't my statement. My statement was, the theory is, if you like his band, you'll like his show. Oh, well, I mean... Because, that's... yeah, not that you'll like... Not, not, back, not vice versa. That's what that's what someone told me that like, if you think that he does, he's a creative genius in his music, then you would appreciate what is Umbrella Academy. I think that there's a lot of fans out there though that's actually probably discovered that before they discovered the band or still haven't even discovered the band and just fans of that. Yeah, no, definitely, I, I do agree. I definitely think that that's a big population because. Um, I mean, a the lot comic book world like, is storming with fans, so I mean that's a dark yeah, horse comic too. Yeah, and, and it, I'm, I'm sure it has some – I think it has some anime influence in it, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know about the comic. I've, I've actually been meaning to get my hands on one of the comic books. I might have uh, my comic book store guy buy me a, a graphic novel and see what it's like. I've heard it's very weird um, compared yeah. to what we see on the show. Uh, but this season, they, they really they really touched a lot of on the right uh, – like a lot of the right stuff. I mean they go back to the 60s, so that was the time of like the, the um, civil rights movement and stuff like that. Yeah. So they really yeah. do they really do touch on that because one of the main actresses, she's um, she's uh, African-American, and she definitely um, plays one of those key roles in that show where like she's actually trying to uh, build up a civil rights movement when Kennedy comes into town because it takes place around the time of Kennedy's assassination, so – Ooh. That 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 actually is like one of the the main plots of the entire season two is, is around Kennedy's assassination. That's interesting. So yeah, no, it's they did a really good job though because that is what really triggers a lot of the events that are are destined or planned to happen in the season two, which I really like. I mean, I've always been a, a big um, fan of like the the theories behind Kennedy's assassination, like a bit being a conspiracy, multiple shooters, and they really do touch on that in this show. Like, of course, the Illuminati had something to do with it or something, you know, multiple <laughs> shooters. They really do. But I wanted, I, I'm, I'm, we don't have stuff with this on camera. But I'm, I'm interested in how people think there's a second shooter. Oh, well, no, we can put this on camera. I, I can. Fully... Well, I don't know how much time Rob has. That's why. I can. Fully... Oh, no, I, I was, 
I could fully. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Rob. Um, no, no, no. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I could bad. kind of fully back that in a way, though. I mean, I'm not saying I was there and I witnessed it, or you know, I don't know. I don't know what intentions were for shooting, but there's this movie, and it, of course, it's just a movie. It's with Kevin Cosner in it. Um, is that Kev Kevin Cosner that played Superman's dad, right? And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. Kevin Cosner is playing a lawyer, and he's going through the the trial of the assassination of Kennedy. Um, and if you break down the footage, which he does in the movie, uh, you saw that one bullet killed uh, one of his guards in the car. One bullet shot Kennedy in the neck. One bullet shot him in the back of the head. And then one bullet shot someone else in the car. So that was four bullets. And with the sniper, <laughs> that's pretty hard to fucking do, especially keeping up with the vehicle and everything. Uh, that's It's a very hard thing to do. I think what... And, you know, this is not me getting political. This is all conspiracy theories, obviously. I, I don't know what the actual intentions were behind uh, the killing and assassination of John F. Kennedy, uh, one of probably one of the greatest presidents that ever lived, um, in my opinion, at least. But I, I don't... The most What's up? The most He's probably one of the most loved presidents. Yeah, well, I think his yeah. intentions were good, you know? Like, he had... I, and that's... I don't... And I can't get... Like I said, you probably know more about this subject than I do, Sammy. But I, I, from what I've seen and what I've learned in, in history, I, I feel like his intentions were good for the country. Um, yeah. But then again, I don't, I didn't know the well, the man too well. But, um, I feel that with, uh, with this, I, I, I think the, the, and this is me again, conspiracy theories. Illuminati probably wanted him dead because of, um, him basically going out there, kind of being anti. I think he was a Catholic. Um, so that, that was uh, already a no, no in their eyes and him doing all this good for the country. Like they couldn't stand that. Like, I think, uh, the whole thing with the Cuban missile crisis and stuff, that was a, a big put on it as well. But I just don't think they liked what he was doing and they had more puppet puppeteering, uh, strings attached with Richard Nixon. Cause he, wasn't he elected into president right after he got assassinated? No, it was Lyndon Johnson. I Lyndon Johnson there. for the last year. Right. And then Nixon got elected the next year, didn't he? Or am I thinking? I'm not great on my presidential. Uh... Richard Nixon's the one that <laughs> talk like this, right? I am not a crook. Yeah, yeah he's a... you know what I'm talking That's about. Like, yeah. I, think yeah. was, I think it was Nixon. Um, yeah, he was a he was a very crooked he's a president. president. He's a very... I think he got elected in '68. Uh, yeah, so he was uh, after Kennedy. I think Johnson did a full term. So he was after Kennedy. Uh, I think, yeah, I think he I think he was his VP, then did a full term. Okay, and then it was. I'm sick if I can recall my well they, likewise though I mean it, it, it seems like they had a lot of holding on that uh, a perfect example of how corrupt Richard Nixon was was uh, if you watch the movie Watergate. well if you watch the if you watch the movie Watchmen and this is just a comic book but it, it you know they mix reality with uh, uh, you know fictional events um, a, a really good thing that if you pay attention to in the movie is that every time uh, you see Nixon in that movie his nose gets bigger and bigger they did that on purpose because they were doing it, what's called the Pinocchio effect because he all he does is lie. All he did was lie throughout his entire presidential campaign. So, yeah. and he is literally the reason that the way politics are today, right? Completely because he changed the way that the media and the presidency interacted, right? Uh, and so you can blame him for the way that politics currently is, right? Um, because he completely utterly lied was just oh i am not i, I don't know anything right. about this whole and, you know i don't mean to get too much into politics here like that's old politics and you know if there's people that like yeah. those presidents we're not going to hate you for it you might have your reasons why you like them uh there's no hate oh, but, here uh, libraries in california the nixon libraries in california so yeah that's, um, that's a, but in my that. opinion i was uh you know in middle school i had this friend who was a huge john f kennedy fan so i learned a lot through him and, you know, as, as I got older, I mean, he would appear in more and more things like in movies or uh, he appeared in one of my favorite video games, Call of Duty Black Ops. He was actually a playable character in Zombies, which was <laughs> super fun. Um, he has one of the best lines in there. Like Nixon is like, oh, my God, what is that? And then fucking he stands up like a G, dude, gets his suit like this. And it looks at Nixon goes, zombies. <laughs> and then fucking opens up a fucking thing and just pulls out a gun. I'm like, look at this fucking badass, dude. Uh, dude, no, but, um, 
anyway so back to where what was going so yeah i mean i i believe that there were multiple shooters tied to uh kenny's assassination how many i don't know uh oh. confirmed it looked like there was from what i've seen in that movie and that's just a movie so i don't know how real that is or how much research they went into doing that i think it's a movie based around real events about the actual case on on uh, nixon or um president kennedy uh but uh Definitely, he does count four, four bullets and four different shots coming from four different areas. So that is four that we know of. From what I've heard, there were up to like 20 shooters uh, in different buildings plotted everywhere because they, they wanted him dead. That's how bad it was. Um, but tying this all back to also, the- Go ahead. Wait, 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 one more fact about this. Um, that also changed the way that uh, presidents traveled. Yeah, they didn't um, travel outdoors now anymore. now your president is not caught dead in this city. I mean, I don't know if you saw the interview uh, <laughs> that they did a while back, like 30-something 30, 30 hours with President Trump, but they showed the inside of his car, and that shit was oh, like yeah. – the door was like that fucking thick, dude. <laughs> that shit's bulletproof oh, yeah. as shit, dude. Well, the thing is, is so when the president is going anywhere – they take that car um, everywhere, course, don't they? Well, yeah, his car goes with him everywhere. Is it, do they um, have a little goes, space for an Air Force One? Yeah, there's a space for an Air Force One. Um, oh, there might be one specifically for Air Force One. Okay. There might be one that just goes Air Force One, and then there might right. be one just for his like local travel. Those are nice DC. cars, by the way. I love the way those style yeah. those cars look. Yeah, yeah, they definitely they have, they definitely have multiple of them because when I went to the White House, uh, when I was walking around there, you saw they them. definitely had more than one. Um, but uh, yeah, I saw it. And I saw like the classic ones, um, oh. but for example, if he is going to a city and he's going to be traveling in that city, so for example, at the inauguration, on the top of every building there were snipers. Snipers, yeah, they snipers. have to have that though in case someone tries yeah. to assassinate him or something. Yeah. So I uh, and then another example at the State of the Union, they set up such a perimeter around the Capitol building that it's stupid. No, like that, you have that's barricades. how it is. I think that's usually how it is at the White House 24-7, though, isn't it? No, but, like, there's always barricades up at the White House. Right. But, like, you can't drive through near the Capitol building during the State of the Union. Oh, wow. Because there's barricades everywhere, and there's armed guards literally everywhere just chilling with their, M, you know, their M4s. They have to, though, man. They're protecting the president. Yeah. Regardless yeah. of who it is, you know, they it's just yeah. their job. Um, well, yeah. No, I, I'm just saying, like, that's how much protection has changed since, you know, now, Kennedy I wonder, driving through Dallas. Going back to Kennedy's assassination, I wonder if they actually have that car, like, on display somewhere. Like, the car, the exact car he got. Someone has it or something yeah, I'm sure, for a museum. I'm sure they have it somewhere. I'm sure the Kennedy, if the Ken, if Kennedy has a library, so I'm pretty sure it's there. That'd be really, I, really I interesting to see. Because I know if you go to Vegas, they have, like, um, uh, what's, their, what's their name? Um, Cly, uh, Bonnie and Clyde's car that got all shot up. Which is really cool to look at. You can see the bullet holes and everything in it. Yeah, I'm imagining yeah, cool. at his library, he has the the card. I think um, that could be I, an interesting could... series for Nights of Horror. We talk about conspiracy theories. Oh yeah. If you guys want to see that, leave some comments below because I think between the three of us, we can do something good with it. Yeah, that. I'm. All, I love. I love conspiracy series and yeah. a little bit of conspiracy theories. Conspiracy yeah. series. Yeah. But yeah, in saying yeah. that. I must go now, gentlemen. Uh, Got to go back to vacuuming and mopping floors. All right, Rob. Thanks for joining us, brother. We'll see you next time, man. See you guys next time. Take care. Yep, yep. But anyway, uh, to end that kind of debate, I mean, I think it's still cool to this day. Like, if you go to Dallas, you can actually go where he was shot, and there's like an X right in the middle of the street, the exact spot he yeah. was killed. But oh, uh, basically, I'm ending with that. I mean, I've always – I mean, the point being with that whole story is I am a huge conspiracy theory fan. Like, I like to hear theories about uh, what potentially was more a more bigger plan than what we, we were told on the media or anything. Um, I think – was there someone they blamed? Uh, it was Lee Harvey Oswald, but I think they, they blamed, like, Russia or someone for it or something. Or I don't remember. Unless that was just – Umbrella. No, that was Umbrella Academy. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I mean, they, I mean, I'm mixing fiction with reality now. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, we were at the height of, I mean, literally the at the height right of there. the Civil War. I mean, yeah, the Cold War, not the Civil War, the Cold War. Cold War. I mean, yeah, because, I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than Bay of Pigs and the Cuban Missile Crisis. So, and those were all under Kennedy. That was, like, right after the ending of Vietnam, too, and then we just went right back into the Cold War. That went on for, no, like, no, for decades, though, right? Oh, the Cold War goes on up until, you basically have 
the Cold War ending, I think, during Reagan's presidency. Wow. That was, like, or, what, or the 1970s, 80s? It was, uh, uh, Reagan gets elected in 84 and then gets reelected in 88, I think, if I recall correctly. So he did two terms. Yes. So it, it was going on still while he was in president the entire time? Yeah, all the way up till he says, very famous line, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down that wall. Yeah. No, Which, I, uh, I think with uh, the Cold War, it's definitely... When did Vietnam end? Vietnam ends in the 70s. Oh, so Vietnam was still going 70s. on then. Yeah, because um, I don't think Vietnam began under Kennedy. It might have began under Johnson. Probably. I think it begins under Johnson. Nixon keeps us in Vietnam. Um, and then after that... Hey, man. I think for, Listen, Vietnam... For, you know, I, I'm not all about that? war, but Vietnam gave us some of the best fucking music ever. Bro, they gave us some great films. They gave us some great films. Damn there's a lot of great breaks. Vietnam films, and there's a lot of great Full songs. Metal jacket. Great, great songs protesting Vietnam. You know, Creedence Clearwater is a big band that when you think of Vietnam, that's like one of the first bands I always think of. What's, uh, the, what's that song? Hendrix. What's that song? The Which, there's a, they have a lot of good the songs. CCR. Which the one? CCR one. Uh, they played in Full Metal Jacket. Um, the fortunate right son, yeah, fortunate son. I'm sure. Down air, sure. down air. Yeah. Some folks yeah, about me to wave the flag. Yeah. Um, Ooh, that red, white, and blue. But if I, I can end it here because I know we're at the hour mark, and I know you probably are waiting for food or something. So. Yeah, it's already um, here. So I've been sacrificing for you guys. No, we love Who's you guys. I care? If I can end it here, though, I mean, I'm a big conspiracy theorist. So if you guys would like to see a, 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 a maybe a. a I wouldn't say weekly. I'd probably go monthly on it because it takes some time for to do some research and to get it edited and stuff. Uh, I would try to keep up with it as much as I can and have the guys maybe help out, maybe filming something. Uh, maybe each one of us can have a conspiracy theory we'd like to talk about. If you guys are interested in that, we can uh, start doing a, a little series on that and get into detail. I mean, there's a lot of – and you're probably wondering how does that you know complete to horror. Well, a lot of usually conspiracy theories are – they have a really evil background to them. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, horror – stories out there that are have conspiracy theories black dahlia murder is one of them um so yeah if you guys are interested let us know but sammy yeah so that's what i'm gonna say i uh appreciate you coming on the show today it's my pleasure uh you want to hit him with the social media i did i already hit him earlier but we'll hit him again don't forget like and subscribe my dear friends um go to twitter at knights of war because apparently you can't put the word the in front of there Listen, because it's too long when i yeah when um, i made it it was too long i know i know this is how i remember let me go through this amigo relax <laughs> let me start at the top all right so please go ahead and like and subscribe don't forget to follow us on twitter at knights of horror and at instagram at the knights of horror we got some wonderful links down below to our merch shop um it would be really great if you uh, supported us. Went ahead and maybe bought us something. You know, bought yourself something. And you cool. know what? You know if you, you buy got... some merch, you get one of those. Definitely. You'll get a little clap there. Um, and we got great things. We have face masks. We got sweaters because we know it's warm right now. The hot season. The cold weather. But the cold weather is coming. Or the cold weather is coming, not the cold war. Winter is almost here. Oh, Winter is coming. Oh, winter is coming. And um, we got T-shirts. Uh, we have women's exclusive stuff. We, we got we got the all. ish, if you know what I mean. Uh, we got it all. We got some great logos there, uh, some new stuff, um, East versus West. You, you name it, we got it. And if you want to see something on there, let us know. Let us know. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk with you all and shoot the beep with you all. Oh, all there's something I can get. I can get a sound effect of the the sensor thing every time you want to say it oh thank you we can do that we can add that to the board yes. um but it has been a pleasure nonetheless we appreciate you sticking around this long and we really hope if you're watching us on friday you have a great weekend or if you're watching it any other time you just have a great day also uh being that this came out on friday uh Join us tomorrow for our birthday, 22nd birthday bash live stream celebrating my birthday. It's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to have a good time. We're going to – what are we doing? We're watching Not Scary Farm stuff. We miss Knots. Yes. We're all going to choose some videos, and we got a very special surprise video Wait, at the end for all of you. Would I have to choose something? Anything you want to watch, brother. 
Anything I want to watch? My my birthday, Sue birthday. We're going to watch Two Girls, One Cup. Stay tuned. Just kidding. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to Shoot the Shit. We love you all, and we'll see you guys next week. Peace.